figured I should show you the video setup we've been using for the class. This consists of a number of pieces of equipment. First, we have a so-called light board here in the middle. I'll get to that in a second. This is important for the pen, but it's not necessarily the critical piece of equipment when it comes to high quality recording. So in no particular order, first, you're gonna need lots of black drape or muslin uh, to avoid reflections. First, a black backdrop, like a meter and a half or so from the screen uh, so that I can get a little bit of depth of field. Then we have two lights. Ouch, there, that's bright. So these are 200 watt uh, modern LED lights and that's probably the minimum you should go for. You need more light than you think. So this one is the so-called key light that's operating at 100%. So here we're really outputting 200 watts and then we're using a softbox on it to, uh, well, mostly to make the shadows uh, a little bit softer and the black uh, egg crate like net you see here that's really directing the light so that I get the light straight on me when I'm recording as you can see it exactly in this direction right but if I go a little bit off axis here in particular I don't hardly get any light at all and that's important to avoid reflections that would show up in the camera on the second side we have a so-called fill light this is a similar light uh, but I'm uh, outputting that and what is it 48%, so it's about half of the key light. And the idea here is really to soften up the shadows on the side of me that's not exposed uh, to the key light. Very traditional light setup. And here too, I'm using a uh, softbox and direction uh, egg crates. In the back here, we have a weaker light that's roughly, I think it's a 60 watt light, but I'm only running it at like 50% or so. So this is the light that's the backlight or the backdrop light. The idea here is that this one on top will uh, light up my shoulders and my hair a bit. And that uh, really makes the lecture that you're recording stand out from the background. It makes it snap and look really sharp. So you definitely want some sort of backlight. Um, and here too, instead of a large softbox, if I were to redo this today, I would probably get a smaller, Smaller light that's just a big LED panel, but it's important that it's soft. Any light without the soft box or uh, say by being at least one feet, uh, one foot in diameter, it's going to create very harsh shadows. The muslin here is mounted on a uh, tripod set that I got from uh, whatever procurement agency that is uh, just a big beam up there carrying the cloth and then I mounted the light there directly on top of that. Not necessarily beautiful, but it doesn't show up in the recording, so I don't really care. I'll get to the light board in a sec. Um, the other important piece here is the recording equipment. So here I have a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Uh, the 6K part is not important, there is a 4K version too. Uh, but these cameras use lenses that are either standard Canon EF lenses for the 6K, or uh, I think it's micro four thirds for the 4K. And we just happened to have a couple of Canon lenses. So it was easier to get that one. The complication here is setting things up to record the light board there and me in the front. And as you can see, even here, right, there are a ton of reflections. Um, you do not see those in the recordings. Why don't we see those in the recordings? I'll get that to that soon. The other complication here is that when I write on that light board, I'm going to write so that I'm, well, I'm right-handed. Um, I didn't switch to be left-handed in all the recordings, but that means that I'm writing for the opposite side. So if I'm writing on the opposite side of the screen, it's going to be backways when seen from this side, right? The way I handle this is that I'm filming through a mirror here, but this can't be any mirror. If you do any use any cheap mirror here, you're going to get ghosting because you get a weak reflection from the front surface and then an actual reflection from the backside. So this is a front surface mirror that we got from Thor Labs. Uh, it's not expensive. It's a bit over $100 or so, but then uh, you can't get them larger than eight by eight inches. That was, I think, I couldn't have made with the mirror that, I couldn't have made it with a mirror that's one inch smaller. And then we just built our own mounting device for it so that I could put the mirror on a separate tripod. Do you see the black lens there? The reason why this is black is to get rid of the reflections. So here we're using a circular polarizing filter for two reasons. The main reason is this one. 
I will show you that monitor screen in a second, but this monitor is absolutely cru cru crucial. Without that monitor, I won't really see what I'm doing. And in particular, when I'm using overlays or anything, there is no way for me to know what I'm pointing at. But as you can see here, that monitor is possibly the part that shows up clearest in the reflection, right? The neat thing with LCD screens is that uh, there is already a polarizer in front of this. Uh, so that means that it's going to emit polarized light. That polarized light is then reflected, and if I now use a circular polarizer here, this means that I can cancel just the light from the LED screen, so that I see the monitor, but the monitor does not show up in the recording. The price for that is that we just lost half the light. So that uh, when, when you record here, you're gonna, that's why we need all the light here. We need tons of light, so that in the end I think I'm using roughly, uh, what is it, ISO 640 or something, and then a f-stop of 5.9 I think it is you can see that yes f-stop 5.9 and ISO 640 that's actually underexposing it a bit uh, I'll get to that in a second why uh, but uh, that's even with all this light I couldn't make do with less and I also I don't want to open the f-stop anymore because if I open the f-stop more I won't have a very uh, large depth of field and if I don't have any large depth of field I will either have me sharp or the markings I'm writing on the light board sharp, so that I need a reasonable depth of field here. Maybe 5.9 is a bit large, but I couldn't make it, I couldn't uh, operate the lens as 1.4 or so. There are a couple of additional things where I, I have a, an external SSD connected directly to the camera here. I'll tell you why in a second. The other part that you notice is that there's a black backdrop here too. The reason for that is that I have windows on the other side, and if I don't to cancel out that light, that light is going to reflect. There is even reflections in this direction. And what I notice is that there is a lamp outside there. That lamp is going to shine into the mirror. The mirror will then reflect the light on the screen. And that light ends up showing the reflection of the lamp outside in the corridor. You have no idea how many reflections there are. Do you see that I had to cover the... This is a blank part on the tripod. I had to cover that in something black too. Basically, anything that is not black is going to create a reflection. So you need to look really, really carefully in your monitor and make sure you don't have any reflections or you're going to live to regret this. I think that's mostly it. Uh, the tripods and everything, they're cheap, so it doesn't really matter. Um, let's move over to the recording equipment here and show what we're doing. So the key piece here is... Um, a small recording device, also from Blackmagic, just like the camera. There's an Atom Mini, and I use the Pro ISO version. I'll tell you why uh, shortly. There are a bunch of ATMI connections coming in here. First, there is a connection coming in from the camera, uh, and then there is also a connection coming in from my laptop. So I'm presenting on my laptop as if it was an external screen. That means that I see the presenter notes and everything on my laptop. This uh, small device has a couple of nice functionalities. One of them is that if I configure this in the computer, it can create an overlay, basically the equivalent of a green screen, so that anything in my presentation that's black ends up being removed, and then that is superimposed on top of the output. So if you now see the output, ouch, the screen here looks bad. Um, if you look at the output in the uh, monitor there, do you see that my hands actually go under the protein here? Because again, anything that's black ends up being replaced. Uh, and I have no idea why the screen here is so dirty. I'm going to need to clean it. The monitor I see, because that's connected to the output from this ATMI Isopro uh, with HDMI. The problem with this, uh, oh sorry, there are two more things. Uh, I also connect a small SSD device here, so that this ATEM Mini, that records the ISO version here, that will record all these streams separately. So I'm going to record the stream from my computer, I will record the stream from the camera with proper time codes. Uh, it will also record audio, so I have a separate rec audio link here to a wireless lapel microphone from Reddit, and this one I'm wearing this. Um, this is a special adapter to it. Uh, that means that I tape it with surgical tape to my chest or my T-shirt rather, and that means that uh, the lapel mic doesn't show up at all. It's completely hidden under my shirt. That is also recorded separately. I can have up to four streams and two microphones. In practice, I only use two and one microphone. Uh, what this device also does. Uh, 
is that it automatically creates an editable object that I can open directly in DaVinci Resolve, which is really nice. Um, but the one problem here is that it's only 1080p, uh, 2K. So how do I get 4K videos? Well, the cool thing here is that the camera itself can output raw data in 6K. And that will end up on the SSD connected directly to the camera. Then I can take those files and just drag them on top of the video project that I have in DaVinci. And because they are time coded just as the output from the ATEM Mini ISO here, I can just tell DaVinci Resolve to use video originals or camera originals. And that will mean that it will now replace the video part with the 6K resolution. So technically the laptop output is still uh, only uh, 1080p. Uh, I guess I could record that locally in higher resolution if I really wanted to, but there is no point. So what happens here, just to show you an example, then I use a marker. The, white, the uh, light board here is a bit of a special device too that I ordered from uh, Learning Glass Europe. The white light here is actually completely pointless. That's their built-in version of presenter lights. It doesn't help at all compared to the much stronger lights, um, but again, it doesn't hurt either. Do you see the blue lights here? So this is a piece of roughly 10 millimeter thick, uh, super clear glass, low iron glass. That's important because otherwise it would be a bit green. The blue LEDs here, they shine into the light from the side. And that means that I'm going to get total internal reflection throughout this piece of glass. So I won't really see the blue light here, uh, unless the dirt parts I have. But if I now write with a marker here, this is a fluorescent marker. It's super important that they're fluorescent. The normal marker won't work. Let me show you one. Just Here's a normal marker. With a normal marker, it will just look like that. Not visible at all. The fluorescent marker, when they're hit by this blue light, they're gonna obviously going to create fluorescent light. That fluorescent light is then reflected so that I see it into the camera. And that's the whole, that's the whole way this works. There are a couple of different markers. I'm not really super happy with any of them. Um, Basically, you have to choose whether you get something that's really visible or something that's easy to erase. You can't both have the cake and eat it. And in practice, I'm still struggling with the base, best way to erase this. Um, wet erasing with some sort of window cleaner is better, but uh, that quickly gets very ugly and dirty while you're doing the recordings. And that's why I'm occasionally a bit lazy. Thank God, as long as you have plenty of light, uh, the uh, the part that looks like horrible dirt on the screen here it doesn't show up so much in the total video it's barely noticeable so don't worry too much about it and that's basically it um, there are unfortunately all this equipment in particular the atom mini iso it appears to be a bit buggy or it could be the ssd drives or something and then you keep running out of battery and the wireless microphones and everything so unless you're really careful you do you will end up re-recording some stuff now and then but uh, hey you learn as long as you live <laughs>